If you are watching this right now, you want to install a house battery into your camper, but you probably don't know how. Wiring isn't difficult, but it always seems to be an issue for a lot of people. It's also hard because a lot of the time it ends up looking like this. Electrical work has been an issue for me in the past as well, but the more wiring you do, the more savvy you become. The more savvy you become, the more challenges you take on, and the more challenges you overcome, the more confident and capable you are. All that starts somewhere though, and for you van lifers out there, I hope it starts here. This battery setup is not going to be like most other tutorials. We are not going to be dealing with lithium battery banks, shore power, solar, or Bluetooth controllers. This battery setup is going to be the easiest, cheapest, and simplest setup you can put together. The first component we need is a battery. Vehicle batteries are commonly unsealed lead acid batteries. Unsealed lead acid batteries can leak, they give off flammable gas, and can cause corrosion. Instead, we are going to use an Optima. Optima batteries are sealed AGM batteries. They can be mounted in any position. They're available used just about anywhere. What you want is a yellow or blue top battery with a light gray case. The light gray case indicates the battery is a dual use or deep cycle battery. The blackish dark gray cases are for starting batteries. Starting batteries are not suited for house battery use. The second component is an inverter. I found this inverter on Amazon. It includes USB ports and a voltage gauge. It also has an off switch to preserve power when it's not in use. This unit also has an internal breaker, so it will turn off if a fault is encountered. The third component is a terminal block. This unit has a good amount of outputs with easy to use ground and power terminals. And of course, a cover. The fourth component is a battery disconnect. There are a couple of possible options here. The first is a basic switch. These are very inexpensive, but they require you to constantly connect or disconnect the batteries to make the system work. If you leave the batteries connected, you can accidentally kill your starting battery. If you leave the batteries disconnected, you won't charge your house battery. The next step up is a continuous 2D solenoid. These can be wired up to engage the batteries when the vehicle is started. The downside is they require you to tap into the vehicle's ignition wiring. So depending on your vehicle, this could be super simple or difficult. The best option is a smart relay. Smart relays use voltage sensing to open or close the relays. This setup does not require you to tap into your vehicle wiring, and the connection between the batteries becomes automatic, so there's nothing for you to forget. The fifth and final component is some zero gauge cable. You need large gauge because the run from the starting battery to the house battery is probably going to be a long distance, and the amperage between batteries can potentially be very high. You will need a couple tools to complete this project. First is a cable crimper. This is a bit of a specialty tool, so if you can't get access to one of these, you can solder the cable ends. You will need a heat gun for heat shrink, or you could skip this and use electrical tape as well. An impact and a drill. You will need a saw of some kind. There are a lot of options out there, so use what you have. Wire crimpers. I have a set of ratcheting crimpers, but the cheap ones will work fine. Wire strippers. Once again, I have some fancy ones, but the cheap ones will work fine. And hand tools. Oh, and some zip ties. The batteries in this setup will share voltage between each other. This blue top is at 12.68 volts, and this red top is at 12.33 volts. If I connect the two batteries, they will begin to share voltage. The blue top will share its additional power with the other battery until both are equalized. When the vehicle is running, our charge source, the alternator, will provide the starting battery around 14.5 volts. When the voltage jumps up, the smart relay senses this and connects the two batteries. When connected, the two batteries begin sharing voltage and they will charge. When the vehicle turns off, the voltage from the alternator falls off and the smart relay will disconnect the batteries. This smart relay also has an override function that will connect both of the batteries. You would use this if your starting battery died, and it would allow you to jumpstart your own vehicle from the house battery. To connect the inverter, 
we need to install some ring terminals. Take the plug apart and take note of the polarity. The center plug will be positive and the side contacts are ground. Cut the old contacts off and mark the positive wire. Strip the wires, slide on some heat shrink, and terminate the wires. Now we can connect the inverter to the battery. Our fuse block will take ATO, ATC, or ATM fuses. If you're not sure which one you need, just take the fuse block to any auto parts store. This fuse block has a nice fault indicator light. The light will come on if a fuse is blown. All right, let's start building our box. This part of the build will be up to you. I'm making this simple box from scrap wood because my van is currently unfurnished. If you have a more completed build, you can install the battery inside of a cabinet or under your bed. I'm not doing a super nice job on this because it's not going to be permanent. Remember, always clean as you go. This relay requires you cut your own clearance holes in the case. One of the many ways Chinese companies keep product prices low is by cutting corners. This relay is potted into an injection molded case that was designed for something else entirely. While you're watching this build, let's talk batteries a bit more. This setup is designed around using an Optima or an Optima-like battery. The yellow or blue top Optimas are not true deep cycle batteries. They are a kind of all-around hybrid. A true deep cycle battery will want a very specific and controlled charge input. Charging a true deep cycle with an alternator will shorten its lifespan considerably. These Optima deep cycles were designed specifically to be charged from a vehicle alternator. So don't think about building this setup with say, a nice 200 amp hour AGM battery. Besides, if you're throwing money at expensive components like that, this video is not for you. This setup is designed to be cheap, simple, and easy. Van life is often portrayed glamorously, but the reality is much different. Some people live out of vans as a choice, but some people end up living in vehicles out of necessity. Getting access to auxiliary power will help a lot with a person's quality of life in a vehicle. Clean up and blow out any sawdust from the components. I'm using some leftover wiring here. If you don't have anything like that, go get some 12 gauge primary wire from your local auto parts store. That gauge will be large enough to handle any of the electrical loads you will put on this system. Run a wire from the battery positive terminal to the positive terminal on the fuse block.
do the same for the ground side. Make a cable to run from the battery down to the relay. When making cables for tight spaces, make sure to clock your terminals. Run the smart relay ground wire up to the fuse block. Run the yellow override wire into a switch. The control side of a relay is normally under one amp, so any switch will work here. For me, I scavenged an old Volvo switch. Mount the switch. I drilled this access hole for the starting battery cable. I actually ended up running holes on the other side later. Function check your relay override switch. For my man, the best access point to connect the battery cables to the starting battery was under the seat. Trill an access hole. Install a grommet. Next, we need to find a good ground location. Make sure you sand any ground location used down to the bare metal. Safely route the battery cable under the vehicle and up to the starting battery. Terminate the cable at the appropriate length. Go ahead and attach your ground cable. Install the driver's seat and route the cables. When the cables are routed correctly, attach both terminals to the starting battery. Locate and install your box. Make sure you secure this box extremely well. You don't want it flying around inside of the vehicle. 
Assemble everything in the vehicle and perform a function check. Like I mentioned earlier, my setup is a little crude because this is temporary for me. These components are actually for my friend Cody's truck camper. I'm running something a bit more serious for my final build, so keep an eye out for that video. As usual, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope this content was helpful to you.